I raised two girls here, two daughters, and we had a happy life here. Here is Ntata in the Eastern Cape. It's where Willem Skuman has lived with his family, building a thriving career for nearly 25 years. Lately, though, it's become more hell than home. Never used to carry a firearm. The last five years, I carry one every day of my life. Rampant crime and an apparently indifferent police service has forced him into a different role in life. Heading a management team one moment, tackling criminals the next. Luister hier so, hier is nou net twee Canadians gevat. Hier is twee ou mense. The iconic Wild Coast. From the southern border of KwaZulu-Natal to East London in the Eastern Cape, this jagged section of coastline is an unspoiled national treasure. With kilometers of untouched beaches and off-the-grid adventure, it attracts tourists from around the world in search of natural beauty. But to reach the wild coast, tourists must pass through the province's most dangerous city, Ntata. Once you're in Umtata, all rules change. Lock doors, close your windows, don't trust anybody, don't speak to anybody, stay away. Because um, if, you, if you interact with anybody here, 90% of the time they try to scam you out of something. Not only is Umtata the gateway to the wild coast, but the N2 highway from Durban to Cape Town passes right through the heart of the city, bringing unsuspecting tourists to the doorstep of criminals. I will not recommend any tourist actually to travel through this town. Many residents here say the police have lost the battle against criminals. And amidst the lawlessness, one crime thrives above most others. Card skimming, where unsuspecting tourists fall victim to unrelenting and sophisticated syndicates. For Pauline Hunter and her husband Mark, South Africa was a dream holiday destination. They arrived in 2018, driving to Durban via Tata. There was a couple of guys standing in the middle of the road. They had all um, official looking vests and things on, and we got stopped. They were stopped at a fake roadblock. Pauline and her husband were trapped in the scammer's web. But they weren't the first and nor would they be the last. This footage was filmed by another tourist just last year. It shows that nothing has changed in the scammer's MO in the years following Pauline's ordeal. The scam begins in the same way Pauline described. Tourists are forced to detour round a fake roadblock by scammers wearing high visibility vests. The bridge is broken up, you oh see? No. So you need to get this permit oh. inside the garage. Follow this message is permit. Okay, we're going, this... okay, we're going to the hotel. After being forced into a detour, one of the scammers takes the victim to the nearest ATM, where, with a sleight of hand, their bank cards are stolen. This one, there was about five or six of them around us. And they sort of separated us a little bit. And I turned around, looked at my husband, and he had four guys standing behind him. And, and they were very intimidating. He just didn't know what to do. Confused and shocked, the couple didn't immediately block their cards, and the scammers cleaned them out. They got between the two accounts, was about nearly 10,000. 10, 100,000 rand. 100,000 rand. 100,000, oh my God, 100,000 rand. Yeah been left with no money. I think we had 200 rand that we'd taken out in cash that morning. That was all we had. We still had nearly a week of our trip to go. It's a story Willem has heard from countless tourists bringing valuable investment into this desperate region. After years of standing by, he'd had enough. He started a WhatsApp group and invited others in the community to help him police their besieged town. We started to collect vehicle registration numbers. We're on high alert. We turned the tide and we started to fight with information. Amid a lack of assistance from the police, Ntata business owners installed CCTV cameras throughout the city. The scammers were now being monitored by a community determined to fight back. In his store alone, Willem has over 160 cameras with 10 constantly monitoring the ATMs. We've put a loudspeaker out. If they come here and we spot them, 
we make a noise. We call them by name, we call them criminals, we, we don't shy away from anything. Ruth is among the residents putting their lives on the line to protect their businesses and the tourists. It's not her real name, and she asked us to hide her identity for the safety of her children. I'm so against crime, and I don't like seeing people being used or vulnerable people being taken advantage of. The group is constantly on high alert. After a message on the group saying the scammers are in action, Ruth rushes to the scene. This dashcam footage shows her intercepting an Israeli tourist moments before he's scammed. And I went straight to the tourist and the one um, scammer still grabbed my arm and intimidates me. Also just saying, what you doing, what you doing? And then I'm telling the tourist, don't put your pin, you're being scammed. And the other guy comes from the right hand side and he still tells him, put your pin, put your pin. The scamming attempts are endless, Ruth tells us. She's called into action every week. Cameras mounted at the petrol station show the tourists getting into a car and leaving town. We call it a perfect crime. First of all, they never open a police case. There's no blood, it's white collar crime. It might appear a soft crime, but it's giving tourists yet another reason not to visit South Africa. Hardly ideal in a country hungry for the tourist dollar. This man works in private security. For his safety, we're calling him Victor. Another group member, he's constantly on guard. We join him while he works back up for a joint sting operation between the community and a number of banks with branches in town. How often are we seeing this happening? On a daily basis. Messages start coming in from the group. Again, card scammers are on the move, targeting a Canadian couple. They're Anne and Lewis McKenzie, who are both over 80. In love with South Africa, this is their fourth trip to the country. We have a rental car and we love to tour through South Africa. The, the, the scenery and the vistas are spectacular. We wanted to revisit Kruger National Park. But as they drove into Mtata, they were hit by scammers and detoured. We were told that the highway was closed, the bridge was out because of flooding. The CCTV footage shows Anne and Lewis completely oblivious to what's unfolding, following the scammers to the ATM. What happens next isn't caught on camera. He said, your card's stuck in there. You have to put another credit card in, so I did that. I knew there was something really wrong. There was a police car parked there, so I banged on the roof of the car to get attention, and I hollered, police, police, police. Instead, it's one of Victor's teams that arrives just in time to intervene and help make an arrest. It's escalated so much that it's actually uncontrollable, and the problem we have is the police are undermanned. I think Umtata has been neglected mm -hmm. by the government. To figure out what the police are doing to tackle the scammers, we call the area's district commissioner, Major General Pumzile Tejana. And I just wanted to find out from you, is the SAPS aware of the high rate of card scams that are happening in Yes, we are deploying in town, but uh, we have some few challenges. Firstly, the challenge uh, that uh, Mtata is very congested, I believe you know that. What I'm trying to get at is that we, we are aware and we're doing something about it. Canadian couple were hit like right now. In the time that we've been here, all you hear is people that are getting hit almost at every, every ATM that you go to. So where are those foot patrols at this time? The foot patrols are there, but uh, sometimes they don't cover, I mean, all the areas. That is what I'm working, I mean, we are working on with the municipality in terms of, of safety. While the police are making plans, Tourists like Anne and Lewis are not safe driving through our country, especially in hotspots like Mtata. Maybe we're getting a little older and not, not quite as quick on the uptake on stuff. They say this will probably be their last trip to South Africa. Thanks for watching. 
Have you heard about our new podcast? It's like carte blanche, but without the Sunday blues. Find Carte Blanche the podcast with new episodes uploaded weekdays on all major podcast platforms. Unique stories, unique perspectives, wherever you go.